Hi. So this is an edited down, post-commentated speed run of the Any% Quad Factor category. Basically, it's where you beat not one Splatoon game, but all three, plus the Octo expansion. And I also just want to say that I'm not a professional speedrunner. I just kind of do this in my free time. So that means that there are a few skips that either I haven't learned yet or I just can't be bothered to learn yet. Also I just need to say that this run will be done in the most recent version of all games, meaning that glitches like pause abuse will be inaccessible and I will also be playing in English, losing a few seconds in Splatoon 1. We start off the run in Splatoon 1 where the time starts when we click yeah after customizing our character. And we will have to suffer through serious Joy-Con drift. And as with all Splatoon games, the first bit is just mashing the A button through a whole bunch of dialogue. And now that we get to Octo Valley, the real run starts. For the first two levels, I'll be trying to collect 100 power eggs. This will let me purchase Seekers, a very helpful sub-weapon that inks a straight line in front of you, making getting around a lot faster. We'll also do Cannon Skip, a skip by jumping on this rail and inking the wall. We can climb up to the end of level 2 without needing to use the cannon. For the first boss fight against Octostomp, there aren't really any tricks other than when destroying the tentacle, mashing the D-pad as quickly as possible to change sub-weapons. This for some reason makes destroying things a lot faster and is called the Rapid Fire Glitch, or RFG. Now we move on to World 2, where at the end of level 8 you can throw a bomb to break open the zapfish bubble in just a way that makes an octoling passing by to hit the zapfish and finish the level for you. But I messed it up in my run. You can also throw a bomb at the end of level 9 to kill the Octo Striker quicker. And now we have enough power eggs for burst bombs, a bomb that's really helpful in the next two levels, because when they hit propellers, they instantly go to full speed, and fully extend sponges when hit. Now for Octo Nozzle, his tentacle can actually be hit from the ground level, meaning you don't need to swim up him. World 3 has two skips that I can't do consistently enough to save time, so I'll just be ignoring them. In level 15, you can geyser boost on top of some boxes to jump across to the end of the level, saving a few seconds. There's also this ink rail jump, which isn't too hard, but looks super cool. And using bombs, we can activate a level from a distance way and super jump to it later. This trick will be more used in Splatoon 2. And we beat up Octo World using RFG, and now it's time for World 5. Yes, I, I know how to count. Because if you ink the gate in World 4 and the block past it, you can jump at the very edge in just the right way to go to World 5, skipping the entirety of World 4. I got this trick first try in my run, so now I'm like really ahead of my PB. And if you're wondering what PB stands for, it's peanut butter. We zoom through the rest of World 5 and now we fight the final boss of Splatoon 1, DJ Octavio. For this, you're going to need to be really good at rapid fire glitching. You'll need to do it on every single punch. But I forgot about that. He has five phases, and at the end of every phase he shoots out a giant eyeball that you need to play tennis with. For phases three and five, use the Inkzookas to hit the eye back instantly. So with that, we are officially done with Splatoon 1. But that was the shortest of all games. Now we move on to the longest of all games, Splatoon 2 quickly changing the HDMI cables to be with my Nintendo Switch, and I already have it open on a new account. So we can start right away. We can leave the Joy-Con drift infested hardware behind us. We do the tutorial area, which actually has a massive skip in it. More dialogue mashing. This could actually be sped up by turning your internet off, but I forgot to do that before the run. So Splatoon 2's story mode is very similar to Splatoon 1, but at least it has original level design. Oh wait a minute, no it doesn't. Also, Splatoon 2 is the only game where every level has to be completed. And we have to do the first few levels with this terrible gun. Look at its fire rate, really bad. The same as Splatoon 1, I'll be trying to get enough power eggs to buy curling bombs. These are basically like Seekers, but they don't have any startup delay, making them much more powerful. But the downside is that they need 500 power eggs, and I want to get them before level 7, because they make directing the industrial squeegees much, much easier. So after beating Toast, the first boss, I'll wait for a second, getting the 50 that spawn out of the Zapfish. And in level 6, there are a few balloons that have lots of eggs. And also, Sheldon shows up. He forces us to use other weapons, so no longer have to use that terrible hero shot. There is basically no glitches in the speedrun, only one and it's where you throw a bomb to activate an ink furler while you're on top of it. And also maybe you could call this a glitch where you hit a grappling from the other side of level 6 using a stingray and skip half the level. 
And by taking damage by an industrial squeegee to pop out on top, you can skip needing to climb on top of it and ride it. Also, another tactic, if you restart the level just as you enter a boss fight, this tricks the game into thinking you've already seen the cutscene, so you can actually skip it. For the samurai boss fight, just hit him with your normal roller swings. All of his attacks can be easily dodged, so there's nothing to worry about. Lord 3 starts off with a fun level, using bombs to manipulate where the tender hooks will run so you can get to the keys faster. And has a cool jump near the end. One big jump later, and we are in one of my most favourite levels to speedrun in Splatoon 2. This level has a whole bunch of grapplings that the developers definitely forgot how far the splatlings range is when they were placing them there. Also, I'm a splatling main, so I like this level. A few levels later, we come to this big jump where you charge up a shot, store it, and jump off the grind rail to hit a grappling from a long distance away. Octo Stomp 2.0 time! He's killed not too much differently from Splatoon 1. World 4 has practically nothing interesting happen. Only this jump where you can hit the propeller to go straight up to the end of level 20. The boss usually has some pretty cool fast strats, but I messed them up. World 5 immediately has a difficult jump to hit a kettle from a moving platform with a bomb, then respawn and do it again. In level 22, make sure you grab the curling bomb rush. It makes the end bit a lot easier. And the same was with an ink storm at the end of level 26. You can use it to hit the ink switches, and at the end of level 27, it can be used to make the platforms move automatically. After beating level 22, what you want to do is you want to equip the splatling and ink the platform as you're going along on the moving platform. This makes climbing up it a lot quicker, and you can actually get onto the kettle platform without needing to wait for it to go back up. Before fighting Octavia, we do also want to upgrade our hero shot, because as mentioned before, this gun's fire rate is terrible, and I do not want to be killing the final boss with it. And now it's time to fight the final boss of Splatoon 2. Wait, this guy looks familiar. Yeah, so as well as Nintendo making an absolute lazy attempt at creating an original boss fight, they seem to have also made the pure embodiment of RNG nonsense. You can only damage Octavia when he shoots out regular punches. If he shoots out spinning punches, it won't work, and bomb rushes and showers will just waste time. This guy could take 6 minutes, or 10 minutes, depending on how lucky you get. I actually ended up getting pretty lucky on this fight with a few double punches that you can hit back by throwing a bomb and shooting at the right angle. So, I am now on pace to get under 6 hours. Quickly reset the game to skip the credit sequence, and we are on to the next game. But we're not done with Splatoon 2, we now move on to the Octo Expansion, which is this kind of like weird sub-game between Splatoon 2 and Splatoon 3, which is still technically part of Splatoon 2 because it's a DLC, but anyway, we're still going to speedrun it. Now, Splatoon 2's Octo Expansion introduces a new feature, being able to skip levels if you die too many times in them. So for every other game, it's any percent. But in this game, it's any percent no death abuse, meaning that you cannot do the skipping feature. Quickly make our character an afro boy, and we can start the run. This game's tutorial area also has a big skip in it. Now, unlike the previous games, this game's levels are spread across an 80s-themed subway station run by a mad telephone. So, this means that three quarters of the levels are optional. We only need to do enough to get the four fangs. Here are the most interesting levels. AO7, if you turn into an octopus form on the moving wall, you can turn into an octoling to give yourself a boost and jump across the gap to the other side of the level, where you would activate a checkpoint before dying. This skips two thirds of the level. At the end of CO3 search AO8, you want to throw a burst bomb onto the bounce pad. I have absolutely no idea why, but all the professional speedrunners do it, so it must be important. The shower is the only boss station that I will pass through. He is killed in the same way as hero mode. Now, I accidentally went to the wrong thing first, so my splits say that I am four and a half minutes behind my peanut butter, but I'm actually around six and a half minutes ahead. Usually, BO1 slash AO3 has a long sequence where you activate a balloon fish to launch this eight ball across a seesaw, but if you line up the ball in just the right way, you can launch it onto the seesaw without needing to use the balloon fish. At the end of JO5 slash C14, you do a big jump and skip a grind rail bit. And with that, we collect the final thing and nearly get turned into an Octo Smoothie. Oh hey look! It's me! From like three hours ago. So now there are seven more levels known as escape sequences. We zoom through them, I don't do Octo Shot Skip because I find it too inconsistent. At the end of Escape 3, intentionally die to set up the moving platforms in the right way that makes them very fast to go between. 
again intentionally die to skip the elevator. The final boss of Octo Expansion is Escape 7, which is me, from three hours ago, possessed by that man telephone. I'm also very easy to kill. Right after which, we have a three minute long unskippable cutscene, so that's my bathroom break. So now it's time to fight the final final boss, a ginormous Venus de Milo which has a blender cannon. This guy cannot be sped up at all, even if you blow up the hyper bombs faster you still have to wait for a bit, so I tried to write high on the ground, but my brain was upside down that day for some reason. So that is the Octo Expansion, and now let's move on to the most recent of all games, Splatoon 3. It is also the glitchiest of all games. Now, for Splatoon 3, you don't have to start the game at the tutorial area, you can do it before entering the crater for the first time. This is so you can change your motion control sensitivity, but I've gotten used to default motion controls by speedrunning the other games, so I just leave it. Now we start off by swimming past a dialogue trigger and into the first few levels. Level 2 has a big jump, followed up by using your splashdown to activate a checkpoint. Then ink the wall as you're going along the dash track, letting you climb up and finish the level in 31 seconds. Splatoon 3 introduces some new movement options, like a squid roll or surge. Surge makes it so that you can skip needing to do half of level 3. And after level 4 comes the first boss of Splatoon. Where does this guy again? Octavio can be killed normally, as well as charging up your splashdown to hit back punches instantly. Then restart the game to skip the cutscene. Oh hey look, it's me again. From four hours ago this time. Same as the Octo expansion. You do not have to complete every single level, only enough to clear the fuzzy ooze by collecting power eggs. But unfortunately for the developers, they placed about half of the fuzzy ooze in just a way that makes them skippable, and combine that with a lot of scavenging for power eggs, and we beat nearly no levels. As mentioned before, I'm playing on the most recent version of Splatoon 3, making pause abuse a glitch that usually gets you a lot more power eggs for completing this level impossible. Because, by the way, Nintendo patched that glitch, which they did not need to do because nobody would discover this glitch on their first playthrough and all they are doing is making this game less accessible to speedrunners. Anyway, that's the rant over, let's get back to the speedrun. So I do an extra level just to get enough power eggs. And a few more levels later because I can't do Owen Skip. As well as scavenging for some power eggs, I'll also be collecting records and decorations. These give the player power-up points, and with some sardinium, we can upgrade the hero shot, making the bosses a lot easier. Site 2 has one skip and the first boss, Fry. Fry's first attack is random, but the next two will always be Whirlpool and Transformation. For Transformation, use the splashdown to hit back nearly all of the eels. And Fry just got cooked. Get it? Anyway, Site 3, all of the required ooze is actually skippable, by squid rolling on this edge, by jumping off and hitting the kettle while falling, and by jumping past a checkpoint and dying to respawn past the ooze. But I didn't know that last one because I didn't know it existed until after the run was complete. And it also has a tight jump to get a decoration. Site 4 has bridge skip and another one where you do a very tight squid roll to go to the other side of the site. And we should have enough power up points to fully upgrade the hero shot, which makes Shiver a lot easier. I do some more zip caster levels to finish Site 5, and Site 6 only has one ooze needing to be cleared. While upgrading, I also got Sensor, a thing that will tell you which big man is the real big man. So that kind of defeats the whole purpose of this Mario Sunshine ripoff, I mean boss fight, but it saves time, so I'll do it. So that is all the levels completed, and similar to the Octo expansion, there is still a few more big levels to go through. The rocket stages. But there are only four of them this time. But four is still too big of a number, so after beating Rocket 1, I do a very tight squid roll against this pipe. It usually takes a few tries. It's very precise. Too far to the right and you'll fling off the edge, and too far to the left and you'll fall down into this hole. But if done correctly, you'll fly up the pipe, fall off once you reach the top, and fall onto the above part. You are now out of bounds. From here, climb around and do a big jump past a death plane, walk through this wall and fall down to the end of Rocket 3, skipping all of Rocket 2 and 3. But we aren't done with Out of Bounds shenanigans. During Rocket 4, if you zip cast onto a moving door, you can clip through it during the cutscene. But I messed it up. Here's what it's supposed to look like. Then you climb up back in bounds to skip half of Rocket 4. So a long walk and a long unskippable cutscene later, it's now time to fight the final boss of the entire Splatoon series. A really big bear. For this fight, you'll need to press one button. And he's dead. 
If you're wondering what just happened there, yeah, I am as well, but earlier in the run I set up a glitch known as menu storage. I made another video on how to set this glitch up, but basically what it does is skip the entire final boss battle by pausing the game. Now it's time to fight the final, final boss of the Splatoon series. An even bigger bear. I don't have any tricks for this one. Just beat it fast. And with that, that is the final game completed and the entire Splatoon series done in under six hours. Which places me second place on the leaderboard. Out of three people. And don't even talk to me about 1400%.